Um, hi guys. We hope you had a nice break. And uh, welcome to our DJ set. I was gonna say. It's a big room, Robbie. It's a big room. A lot of people in this room. It's a good crowd. A lot of energy in this room. Uh -oh. Once I say these ladies' names, I'm already moving to that. I was stuck to it. I'm out. Because this is, you know, like a Gallagher show. There's going to be water going everywhere. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the power trio of Kim Rose. Just let this play. 
laughter. <coughs> so many laughs. So many laughter. Yes, yes. Fucking fucks. Cruelty. <laughs> Boy, I love fun a lot. Don't mind. I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. <laughs> I come to the photo for a stage. Did you go anyway? No, I'm broke. <laughs> it costs money. Like that was the primary thing. If we were sisters got picked up, I would have some expendable cash. As is, I'm spending it on food. <laughs> okay, I wish you could swim with the baby otters. It's okay. Fun. I'll get. How about this? If I ever get any series picked up, I will swim with baby otters and I will motherfucking Instagram the shit out of them. <laughs> Yet, so there's still an option. Yes. What would you guys do? What's your like? If I had stupid money, but I like would realistic. not like I would buy an island. Maybe that's real. <laughs> what did you say? Supernatural oh yeah, for you. Yeah, if you have stupid money, you come to supernatural convention. There you go. <laughs> you call it supernatural? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is that oh, my wait, wait, get me killed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And I'm oh, Kevin the Brand. Really nice. Voices panel. Not as a description, but as a fun word use. What would you What would you do with with with, with money? Stupid money? I would have to have get one of those tickets that you know. I think Lady Gaga was like, I want to perform in space, and I'm like, can I get a ticket to that? Yes. Oh, Lady Gaga said that. Nice. She's like, that's where I want to go next. But you know what? I'm gonna be honest, and I'm just gonna be like, seems like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't even get out my ass to go see her in Vegas. <laughs> And it's like down the street. No, I'm just kidding. Lisa and I actually tried to go and get tickets to see her for this weekend, but she's not singing this weekend. She's not singing this weekend. She's 
是要飞的嘛，雷哥哥，是飞的嘛。Yeah. Got that in space. Things, so, 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 Oh God, I've been just struggling from them. Yeah, Kim's like, I know too well. Uh, yes, final answer. Kim, you're hitting me with your cup. Oh, long locks. Um, That's ghost hair, motherfuckers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, hello. Hello, ladies. I'm, I'm a big fan of the podcast. I've listened from the very beginning. And <laughs> One of the things I am most impressed with, the things that I've learned from you, is how you model active listening to each other. I really love that you don't interrupt each other, that you really actually listen to what the other person is saying. I think that is so refreshing to hear women talk to each other and have a conversation like that and what, what we hear and what we listen. So I'm curious, what are the words that you like to hear most or the things that you like to listen to the most? Like specific words or yeah. like something Either, either one, if you've got specific words that you like to hear said to you, or if there are specific sounds that you like to, to hear, music or nature or anything like that. That's a really broad <laughs> question. So I'm going to take the words part. I'm going to go with the words part. Um, in the podcast. Yeah? Any, the words that you like to hear in your personal life. Okay, the words. Say to you. Lisa's jumping in on this, by the way. Yes. Just you know, we were talking backstage, we're already planning having her on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I love it when, this is probably me and shadow and inner child work I've been doing recently, but I love it when people tell me they're proud of me. I love it. You feel like as adults, oh, don't I'm gonna cry. Uh, I feel like as adults, we don't do that enough for each other, and we're all still trying to step into ourselves, and that gets harder as we get older. It doesn't get easier, and so I feel like we should be prouder of each other, so I appreciate that. I thank you for your observation. In, in the full spirit of honesty, um, I love listening to the human beings in my closet because they teach me. So I'm not trying to model good listening. I'm actually like forgetting to talk, which is quite a feat for this mouth right here. Um, but the other thing is we edited ourselves and I'm super aware of that if I talk over somebody, I don't have a cut point and it sounds like shit. So I'm usually like, oh my God, shut up Kim. You don't have anything to say right there. Yeah, you listen to the earlier podcast, they're not cut quite as well because we'll be talking over each other. Like case in point, like we do on the panels. Podcast, we don't do that. We don't do it. We don't do it. <laughs> uh, it's your turn, your turn. Um, I like the sound of happy feet, be they four or two running at me. Oh. Of course. You know that sound like when it's like happy? Like when your kid's running at you and you know it's a happy run, not just a stumpy, angry run? Or when the puppy's like, mom's going to skit, 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 like that. Give it. And I just like to sound laughter. I'm that person. You know what? Me too. That's a good one. I love, yeah. Man, I love making people laugh. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love. I have a hearty guffaw though, so if I laugh too much at conventions, I lose my voice by the end of the week. <laughs> so I just fucking cackle. Great question Thank you. and observation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for the support on the podcast. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Caitlin. My, I have a podcast question to you. I listen to it every Monday. The only thing that actually makes Monday worth Monday for me. Aww. So, um, what's been your favorite part about doing the podcast? Doing it. <laughs> Fair enough. Like that's the that's the that's the favorite part. It's like going from ah ah ah. Oh, 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 yeah? Oh, oh, fuck, yeah! <laughs> That's a great journey.
journey to make. <laughs> Try quoting that on Twitter, you assholes. Just <laughs> hearing from you guys. I love hearing that you guys listen to it. I love when people tell me what their favorite episodes are. I just love that the things that we say in Kim's Closet relates to your lives. It makes us feel like we're doing things. By know? the way, this is the picture from Kim's Closet. <laughs> I told her that I challenged her to wear to the next convention and she did it. She texted me the other day and she was like, I have a surprise for you on Friday. And I was like, news? My old ones? Yeah. Woo! No, I'm not. They're in my favorite file. Um, thank you very much and thank yeah, you for thank listening. You, thank you for making chores worth doing. Bye, Jenny. Thank, thank you. Hi. Oh, hello. Hi. So I, my question's kind of for Brady. Sorry, guys, I love you too. But um, I was just wondering. No, you don't. No, you don't. Hey, <laughs> okay. okay. you guys don't have to preface that shit. We know. Um, I was just wondering if there's any plans for the second album because the first one was so amazing. I just need something to look forward to. <laughs> um, thank you. And there are no plans for another album uh, immediately. We've definitely talked about it. Uh, but I think that Jason Mann's let it slide on his stage yet recently that um, I'm going on tour with Billy Moran in July. And I think Jason Mann's and Paul Carella and uh, I, maybe Hayden? I don't know. I feel like I should have said that, but I don't know. Yeah, so we'll be doing a little uh, mini East Coast tour. Okay, see you there. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. So my question is, what are your favorite bloopers that you've had with Jared and Jensen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is an easy one for me. I have. Oh, that. give it. Oh, damn it. I mean, I always am like, anybody gonna prank me? <laughs> no, same. They don't. It's because they're scared. They're scared of us. They don't prank us. I don't get pranked. Um, I don't get pranked when they make fun of things I do, like. If I walk too fast or too slow in the next take, they'll like make fun of me by walking extra fast. Um, yeah, they're jerks. And then the one scene with um, when they were talking about, I don't remember what episode it was, Blush, I think, when they were talking about New Doug, and they're like, New Doug's got a thing, and Jensen's just like. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then it was so funny because that scene, they were fucking around with me so much, they were literally throwing things at me when it wasn't their coverage. And you, I think in the gag reel, you saw how many times I had to start over, but I got a text message from the producer the next day going, good job with those boys. Because he watched the dailies and was like, mm, she held her own pretty good. They fucked with me so much, but that's just, they just fucked with me. So really, I'm the only one having fun. Oh, they have fun with you at all? Oh, oh. there's no oh, yeah, they're scared of you. So. <laughs> Kill him or something? I'm waiting. Has the blooper reel come out for no. the last season yet? They just, I think, the cast crew just beat oh, 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 okay. <laughs> I wasn't in it because I didn't get a thing going, are you okay being in this? That, just, would, be, it, that would be surprising. <laughs> Because I biffed it so fucking hard. Oh, yeah. Like, I bit it so oh, hard. Oh, yeah, and they send us the, is it okay, before they put it on the DVD, I think. Oh, okay. I yeah. think. I just, I, I ate it. dirt so hard, and it was 100% my fault, and I rolled downhill, and Jared, like, as he's laughed, like, he's, he's shaking with laughter, but still like, are you okay? Oh my gosh. And Jensen, it comes back, they're both like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm okay. Jensen was like, great, play that back, play that back. <laughs> yeah, Jensen loves it. There's great. nothing like watching the entire crew stop what they're doing and get around to watch your mistake. <laughs> because they're so filled with glee and joy. Oh, that's some. Um, but it is, no, but that is true. Because it's like a family. That wasn't, they, they aren't a group of people getting around to laugh at your misery. It's a bright little unexpected moment that as long as you're okay and you know you're a part of us, let's just enjoy the fact that something unexpected and funny just happened. And so I, I, I took great, great joy in being able to give them that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you.
Thank you. I was like, okay. Vernon, then. No, I <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay, so y'all are all beautiful, amazing women. And I just. But. Have, no, I'm just no, fun. No, no, no. <laughs> I do have to ask, Brianna, I love your hair. How you do you want to know it? how I do it? Okay. Yes. You guys are so funny. <laughs> Somebody take notes and tweet it out. Um, it's just all of the work. I'm not going to be that person that's like, I wake up and just go, and I'm done. It is like I blow dry it. I put three different products in it. I curl it. I put more texture product in it. I blow dry it again. Every once in a while, throughout the day, I do one of these. And then I come out and I go, mm, you need more gum like that. <laughs> That's it. It's fucking product and tools. I am goddamn skill. <laughs> I've got like that natural curl too, but I can't ever get it as beautiful as that. It, so. you, it's literally, it's not like it doesn't, I curl it. I take a small girl curling iron and I take my hair and I wrap around like that. Okay, okay I think what, what she means is where can she find the tutorial? <sighs> <laughs> you want to work more? Am I right? It's just a simple video. Oh just god. Sure. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Go live for all those who are watching. Maybe. I'll look out for it. All right. Yay! There you go. Hi. Hi. What other name do you think would be fit for Supernatural? Name of the show or name of the character? The show. Supernatural. Uh, dudes. <laughs> I made myself laugh about it. In a cool car killing shit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Angry boners. Angry boners. Ain't no boners. I always had a joke from our PJ party. Sorry, it's not an actual. Maybe. Does that sell our PJ party or stay in the way? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Hi. I love the podcast. I have five nieces since the age of 20. I make them all listen to it. You're amazing. Um, silly question, but best or worst scene that you take during Supernatural? Best and worst scene? Best or worst. Best or worst. Just... Uh... <laughs> I need more details. Do you mean like from an emotional standpoint or from an artistic standpoint? Okay, I'll narrow it down. What was your favorite scene artistically to film? Artistically? Ooh. I'll go then. I Do mean, it. That's my, that would be my first one, because artistically, I kind of got to put everything into one. Remember when Lisa sang that song? <laughs> Do you want to know a funny story? Is she sang that song, and Phil let the trailer out for it, and then I was like, I know that voice, and I, I know how you messaged you. Because yeah. Lisa and I have known each other for a long time. We used to audition for musical theater together back in Toronto. Um, I'm gonna pimp you out at the end of this, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, I literally messaged her. I was like, "Oh my God, are you in Supernatural?" And she's like, "Yes, and I know you're on it." And she probably was like, "I don't know what, uh, if I'm allowed to say because I think your character is a bit of a secret." And yeah, very exciting. That was cool. I remember that. That song's cool, and your voice sounded so good. I can't believe you pulled that out. Yeah, Lisa. It's like, what is that? My mother told me such a Jensen thought that that made me an incredible comedic actor. 
he didn't know that I was just not laughing at him because I was scared. <laughs> I think artistically, just in terms of challenges that I feel like I pulled off, my very first episode, in a brief moment when I was standing outside and they were like, it's really cold outside, are you sure you don't want to grab a coat? I'm like, she would not grab a coat after she's just seen her son eat her husband. <laughs> and, um, and there was a moment where Jody, not Kim, because the, that's a whole different tip, but Jody hears the shot that she knows takes her son's life and she has no word. There's, there's just a reaction. And, um, and, and I, I think I still see that in montages and moments and things of Jody that define her. And I think that moment of just her whole world breaking in a shock. And I'm still really proud of that moment. Okay. shotgun down after having blown apart the zombies of being like, the motherfuckers, I'm still here. And that's Y'all are so amazing. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering, I was going to ask if Lisa would come on the podcast, but... There you go. So, dream guest for the podcast? Anybody? John Hill. <laughs> Closet. <laughs> in my closet, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I heard it too. <laughs> oh God! Oh, God, you can't write this shit, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, for me, it's Neil Gaiman. Oh, God. I'm sure he has any good advice from his lawyers and a number of security specialists not to um, go into my closet. <laughs> you need to put a low jack on him to make sure he comes back out. Stay right here. You're my friend, right? most improved by being made into musicals? By oh. what? <laughs> most improved by being made into musicals. Most improved or yes. just like... Existing movies that are not musicals that would be better if they were. <laughs> In my head, that's everything. But I'm going to try to think of something that would be funny as a musical. Because I think that the ones that I'm saying would be improved as a musical implies that they're not good. Um, so what would be... Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> You are not wrong! <laughs> right? Oh my god! Oh, yeah, I've been thinking about that for a minute. Yeah. It's also like the Lion King oh, in my head. I was like, oh my god, if Beyonce could sing Dallas song, that would be the oh, best. Right. And then I was like, ooh! I also would like the, the Destiny's Child to be the Chavettes. Oh, and Little yes. Chapel Horror. Oh, yes. Because that's yes. the like, as your. <laughs> a lot of stuff in my head for a long time. <laughs> that was a great question. <laughs> a I'm still so looking. Have you got anything? I, I, I can't time. see. Here's the problem with my brain. And I say that like there's only one. But in this instance, <laughs> this is the foremost problem, is that I will get something in my head and I'll be like, no, nah, that's not it. And my brain will be like, but that's the only thing you can think of right now. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm like, oh, what does Shawshank Redemption work as a musical? <laughs> Morgan Freeman just walk in, yeah. just let like, down a little bit of dirt. And he'd be like, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. I just gotta break out of here. I'm innocent. Get out of here. I'm gonna help you break out of here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Work in, yeah. in real time, and you know what? I think it did. 
to my show. Oh, yeah. I, sometimes my brain goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I was on the That's exactly what I was trying to think of, but and I was like, it's funny when you take like a serious movie and turn it into a musical, but then I was like, all the things I could think of were really inappropriate as musicals. Because <laughs> movies these days are serious or fucking serious. Um, do a movie I saw recently. What's in the box? What's in the box? Don't you go looking in that 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 box? line of demarcation usually and then a thinning razor at the top which looks like this very specific uh, 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 technique <laughs> I've been there I've literally been there she puts a towel over top of the sink and then you put a towel around you as well right no not maybe I'm gonna take a shower afterwards just right. on the floor and then she just does this she's like no well, keep talking <laughs> amazing um, so the, the, the product is whatever product is in there because quite frankly, I've done this really um, novel thing. I like having antisocial hair color, I guess, and belligerent, um, rebellious hair color, and I realized that in Hollywood, that means gray. <laughs> so fuck you, Hollywood. So I think when I'm 60, I'm just gonna let it grow out and it's gonna be a big mane. But this is really, it's just great. My gray hair is growing in very stiff and um, <coughs> emphatic. <laughs> yeah, but um, if you're looking for texture, I like uh, big sexy hair has a thing called powder play and that will get your hair to stand up as far as you need it. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Powder Play by Big Sexy Hair. Please do tweet that so they send me some free shit. All right. If they don't, I will. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Um, first, I want to just thank Kim and Brianna for last night at the pajama party. Uh, I think it was really amazing of you two ladies to create this space for the fans to be able to kind of talk about all our feels. <laughs> And, you know, it's so wonderful to know that a show that I care so deeply about and cast that I care so deeply about has the same amount of love, caring, and respect for the fans as we have for you. And you ladies demonstrated that to us last night by really letting it be about us and say what we want to say because you care about the fans. And that's so rare and unusual. Uh, I don't know of any other actors, actresses that are like, oh, let's see how the people that have been watching our show for so long think or feel, you know? Um, and so the wonderful thing about this SPN family is that we get to have these moments with you all. And I'm gonna cry. <laughs> But it just means really so much to me, and I wanted to thank you because it's really special and really rare. Um, and um, now that it's getting close to the end, uh, my question for Lisa is: It seems like season 15 might be Billy's season. I don't know how you think it's going to go out. What a way to 
I go? Oh, man. Oh, what was the question? <laughs> I, you know, if it, it goes out in a blaze of glory, you know, uh, Jensen said that he wants to go out in a blaze of glory, whereas Jared said, you know, off into the sunset. But I don't, is anyone going to get out alive at the end? <laughs> da -da. Da -da. I don't know. I don't know. They tell me nothing. They it's not like the Lumpo song you just said. Oh, was it? I was like, what? I was like, da 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 Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, that opens so many things for so many people, and I would love, love to be a part of the 50th final season. Not me. I don't want it. I like any job. No, no, I, no, I don't want to say that. You look in LA now. Hi. So I told Brianna this, but I wanted to make sure I told you, Kim. But thank you for being a fucking badass and teaching me how to be a fucking badass too. But I was just wondering if you were gonna go support your son, Cole Sprouse, and see the movie Five Feet Apart. <laughs> and see the movie Five Feet Apart. Um, I, I haven't actually seen a movie. Oh, I saw. I did. I did see Black Panther. Yes, that's the only one I saw. My daughter. Good girl. Um, so, so, first of all, I am so proud of you, and you are one of those lights that I love watching evolve. Um, thank you for your presence, and I, uh, I like to illustrate the fact that there's lots of ways to support people. I will probably not be seeing that movie in the theater. However, I am so proud of his journey and the artistic integrity that he put into this material and showing people a story that is so specific and still so universal. So Cole is, um, is an artist that I am very honored to have worked with and continue to see his experience as is his brother. Thank you, I love you so fucking much. <laughs> So now that the fans are going to be very hungry for more, is these there, ones? Is, <laughs> these ones? Is there any possibility of Wayward Sisters coming back in any form? Maybe a podcast or anything? A podcast? Another one? Or any kind of Wayward Sister thing? The, the podcast we are doing is the Wayward Sisters podcast. Um, and that was us taking it back. Okay. Okay. So we lent it. We, I used the. We. We lent it to CW. They fucked up. Yes. Uh, and, and so we took it back. That's as simple as that. And now it's ours. Then. So now. That's what we're doing with it. We're doing with it whatever we want to do, you know? Okay. In terms of it being a TV show, no, that's no longer an option. All right. Um, sadly. But also not sadly, because we get, it's ours. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Shower. Yes. But I will take a bath tonight. Yes. <laughs> I took a bath today. Because the tub is so and, so, and I'm not even a tub person, no. but I, like I showed my husband a picture, he's like, you better take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, done. Done. I, I, I but I'm definitely a shower person. It's like a swim. Yeah, no, it's gorgeous. So if there's a nice, gorgeous bathtub, I will take a bath. But I am typically the person who will spend like seven hours standing in a shower. <laughs> I'm a shower person. That's where I get. That's where I do my vocal rehearsing. Brianna, does that count? Brianna, does 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 my rehearsals in the shower count? Always. I only sing in the shower or the car. She makes Literally. me feel so much better. Please. I love it. Please. 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 Please.
the bottom up or the top down? Top down. Well, I gotta wash my hair. I wash my hair twice. And then, no, don't want to know any of that. Okay, hi. Hi. I didn't know where, I was like, you got me wrapped up. I love you guys so much, but um, my question is for Brianna. Um, we got to see Jody bond a lot with like Claire and Alex and even a little bit with Patience, but as like Donna, which wayward sister do you think she would be closest to? Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember because she, Donna didn't have a ton of time with the sisters. So, the girls, let's just, uh, I'm trying to think of what their characters were. Um, I, part of me think, I mean, all of them really, she didn't get much screen time with Kaya. So I don't know how well she knows Kaya. Patience she would like because she sees herself in Patience because Patience is just starting out. Um, and I think that she ha has an affinity for Claire because Claire is kind of a rebel. And so there was actually, in, in the original script, there was a scene between Don and Claire. And that was kind of interesting because it's such a different dynamic. Um, and then, I don't, like, I just love Catherine Ramdeen. She and I got to know each other while we were doing flight training for the pilot. And so I see Alex as an incredibly cerebral uh, young girl, and I think Donna would find that really inspiring and exciting. So I think she sees herself in a little bit of all the girls. So I couldn't pick just one, sorry. It's okay. It's a great Thank question, you. though. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, my question's for Brianna. Um, you Everybody mentioned... should answer. <laughs> uh -huh. um, you, you, you mentioned the donut scene earlier, and so um, I actually, I recently lost like 150 pounds. Pardon? Wow. Holy shit. And I couldn't have done it without this family, seriously. Well, I'm not so proud of you. In, in that in that scene in that moment where you know Dean kind of makes Donna feel like you know awesome sexy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's where I'm going um so how does one how does she genuinely feel about it like is she like you know oh this is like a real compliment or is she like wait what scene are we talking about like like the, so kind of like that whole episode where yeah. like yeah, yeah yeah where he makes her feel sexy. So like, I think that was just in my brain. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> well, no, because I felt it too. So okay. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. okay. Hi. Wow. This is getting complicated. <laughs> Hello. Um, how did, or, did Donna genuinely feel that that was genuine from Dean? And if so, like, how did she know it was genuine? Like that feeling. Really. Because I thought I thought I saw it. That's why I'm asking the question. So obviously. I was um. <laughs> I do think, do you mean at the end when he was like, Doug's a dick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean that part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but even the donut scene too, because like, he eats the donut to like, kind of I don't think Donna was shy about eating. I don't think she was like, um, I, I don't think she was embarrassed about eating that to notice either way. I think she's like, I don't have a donut. Do you guys want a fucking donut or what? And Dean's going to say, yeah, I'm in. And uh, in the scene where she's explaining her um, disorder with food, right. um, and explains her abusive behavior from her husband, um, yeah. and Dean seems um, um, he seems relatively shocked that a man would say what he said to her. I don't know that she was thinking about. How, if he was genuine, I don't think she had a relationship with Dean at that point mm -hmm. enough. But also, in my experience, when someone is has been in an abusive relationship or has an abusive relationship with themselves, compliments are hard to hear. Kindness is hard to hear. Love is hard to accept. Yeah. And I think that Donna was in the same place. So I do think he was being genuine, but no, I don't think that she noticed. Okay. Great right, question. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, my question is for Lisa. So Julian Richards once told a story about being on an airplane and having people look at him as if he's like the actual death. So have you had an experience in everyday life people look at you like, oh no, death in the room? It's a great question. Um, 
greatest thing because I now have like the perfect tagline. I'm just like, don't worry, you're not gonna die. <laughs> and it just works all the time. And um, I just feel a little bit cooler in my everyday life. <laughs> not a lot, but a little bit. And um, it's always cool to be recognized and then people freak out because of the character that I play. It's like, oh my god, you're dead. And I was like, don't worry, you're not gonna die. Like, oh it's not. my god, don't I worry. never thought about you getting recognized. <laughs> I don't get recognized that often, but you, because you're playing death, that's kind of people out. No, it's because of the character that yeah. I'm playing, so it's like... <gasps> <laughs> and I'm like, you need to take that breath or I will take your soul. <laughs> Pretend I'm you and you're the person who sees me. Here's what I'd do. But um, do you know what's uh, funny is when people recognize me, which is almost never, because I live in Vancouver, so I have people who are like, oh, you've been on that show. Or they're like, <laughs> Which I, I, either way, I love. Uh, but I'm going to tell you a funny story that I'm not sure I'll, I'm allowed to, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, uh, I was driving to Seattle for convention. I live in Vancouver, I'm Canadian, but I have a, a work visa to work in the United States. Um, but crossing over is always a challenging thing. We've all gone through customs and they ask you lame questions and whatever. So I'm going through customs with my husband and my daughter, and they're always kind of scary, right? So we reached this um, this woman, and she was like, what's your purpose in Seattle? I said, uh, I'm going to a convention. She's like, what kind of convention? I said, a fan convention for a TV show. She's like, what TV show? <laughs> and I said, Supernatural. And she was like, what's Jensen like? <laughs> happened and all of a sudden she was like because I she was like I'm an empath and I just sense that he is such a good person and she was like can you tell him I said that and I was like you got it and I literally texted him and he was like ha suckers <laughs> oh, it's very funny that's like the only that's the closest thing that had you know I was like oh thank you thank you that got me through it's very very funny <laughs> who asked that question great Ask the question. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Yep, Jensen. I have gold ticket. Um, so my question is for Lisa. Um, I was curious, how did you feel when you found out you were coming back and like nonetheless is death? Like what what was that reaction for you and like how they tied the lore in and everything? It was the best ever. Because it's a little bit of a story, and there's a reason Kim's making that face. <laughs> because, because, oh, do you not know the story? Oh my goodness. So, I'm just minding my business on a Tuesday afternoon, just sitting on my couch. <laughs> when I get a call, or a text, from Kim being like, oh my god, you're the new dad! That's so amazing! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! And I was like, what? Surprised. <laughs> and I was like, we don't even know how great it is that the news is coming from you. You don't even know. And so when it came, I totally am like I was still in the shock of it when when my manager called and was like, so hey, they're gonna bring you back. I'm like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And she's like, and so they're gonna, I was like, okay, what, what are you trying to tell me? But she doesn't know because they only tell her that we'd like to see Lisa back on the show and here's the contract and all that stuff. And so I'm just waiting for the script. And then, because until then, I'm just like, my friend just, you know, sent me a random text message. <laughs> that makes no sense right now. And my, my manager's not saying anything. And then I read the script and you know how in like Adobe, you can Google, you can search your character's name to see where you are. So that was the first and only time that I ever like skipped through. Just to be like, okay, I need to see what happens now. <laughs> And I was like, oh, oh! <laughs> oh my god! No, there was a 
no, there was no faking necessary. It was genuine joy, and I was just, I was just so excited because that's such an awesome role. And the thing is, I had actually been sitting on the news. <laughs> being a good secret keeper. So I had learned the news weeks earlier in a meeting about Wayward. Like I went into the writer's office and it was on one of the boards and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You can't tell anyone. Or we'll fire you and burn your body. And that might not have been what they said, but that's pretty sure I'm, that's what I heard. And so and then I got the, oh, you, no, we, we let Lisa know. And I was like, finally, they let Lisa know. No, what they meant was they sent out the beginning of the chain of command. But there's like a gazillion people that asked, okay, so now we tell them, and then they get a hold of the casting director, and then casting gets a hold of the manager, and the manager gets a hold of the. Blah, 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 blah. What they meant was they started the process. They had not finished the process. I fucking finished the process. <laughs> You telling two her. Two weeks! I said that for two weeks! No, oh, talk to you. you telling her and you finding out from your manager? Uh, uh probably the day. Uh, okay. That's okay. okay. It was a day. It's okay. Right, 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 for all intents and purposes, she could have called me like 10 seconds later. I wasn't the reason why your sisters didn't get picked up, right? That's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm looking for here. Like they didn't go, oh no, that bitch cannot have her own show. She told me that. She was like, oh, damn. She's a liability. <laughs> no, no. But it was the best thing ever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm surprised. <laughs> Yes. So you want to know how Kim and I kind of find out, found out that they were going to try to do the spin-off pilot? Ooh, yes. We were in Australia, <laughs> and we both individually got an email, but didn't know the other one got it, so we didn't know how to approach the subject of... <laughs> and so, Kim was so... She was so... I was... As I... I'm easily excited, so I was like... Oh my God, it's happening! The email was literally something like, uh, we have plans for Brianna and Kim, uh, please let us know if they book anything over pilot season. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm gonna be famous. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Kim, who's much more salty well and bitter in the industry, <laughs> um, she went up to me, I had literally texted, I, I took a screenshot of the email and texted it to every single family member. No, I'm just kidding, just my husband. And Kim came up to me, she's like, hey, this is not, this is, uh, this is not a big deal, but to, to, um, I just want you to know that I got an email. And I went, I got a tuition, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but it's very funny because it's the thing where you're just like, like you're saying, you're like, get, do, uh, hi, hi. Am I supposed to know this thing I know? Yeah. Because I don't know. Yeah, very funny. Fucking knowing that. Uh, Should I be in this whole training right now? Should I be going to my yeah, training exactly. training right now? Oh, yeah. Great question. <laughs> Who's next? Hi. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, no. The question <laughs> came from over there. there. She has a hat on. Time. She's left. You're next. Oh, okay. Hi. Sorry, my bad. Sorry. I was just wondering if you guys have an educator from your, like when you were in school that helped influence you or support you in your process of. In a positive actors. Yeah, that's our next episode of the podcast, actually. Uh, yeah, and I talk about a lot about people from uh, my past. That's what the episode's called, People from Your Past. And uh, um, I talk about my drama teacher. His name's Wayne Dirksen. And he uh, just he thought I was the biggest little shit. He never met in grade nine, couldn't stand me. And then I was like, I just kept on long enough. And then he was just like, Oh no, you're substantial. He was just like, he hated, kid, he hated kids. He was like a big, grown up, ex hippie. Do you know what I mean? We thought he was super cool because we found out he smoked pot. And uh, he just was really real about teaching youngsters how to act, the craft of acting, and the passion of acting. It was, he was very serious about it, and he made me serious about it, so I love that. You know, mine's a little bit of like a, like a backwards around how you kind of 
because it's not the teacher that I thought would be the teacher who would be the one to inspire me, but it was actually Mademoiselle Miette was her name, Michelle Miette, and uh, she was my French science teacher because I was in French immersion all the time. And she got me in so much trouble. I, I had to lose out on going to the class trip to Quebec because she's like, Lisa just didn't apply herself for that, and I just thought your parents should know and you shouldn't be rewarded by going on a class trip to Quebec. And this woman did this to me all the time. She forced me to be better, to do my homework, and to be more of who, I, who, who she knew I could be. And then there was another teacher, my, my art teacher, who I was like, you the coolest! Let me skip class, you know, just let me do whatever I wanted. And it wasn't until afternoon, Well, at, like after theater school, when I was doing my very first community theater, Mademoiselle Michelle Miette showed up to my performance of Fame the Musical, where I was playing Mabel Washington. And she came backstage and she was like, I knew you would find your place. And I just wanted to balk. Because I was like, I thought you hated me. She's like, 